the pressure campaign didn't work. NBC did show the program again, as, and as a matter of fact, made publicity telling the American people, watch the, sci watch the program, you know, these scientists don't want you to see. <laughs> so that made them even more angry. I mean, especially since they knew I had something to do with this whole thing. <laughs> so then they went to the American government. <clears throat> Uh, they went to the Federal Communications Commission, which is the agency of the United States government that controls the uh, television broadcasting and radio industries. But, and this is one of their letters. And this wasn't just some individual letter that was sent. This was a letter that was widely circulated on inter, uh, scientific discussion groups on the Internet, and scientists all over the world were invited to send supporting letters to the FCC. What they wanted the government to do was to investigate NBC, and they wanted uh, the government to force NBC to broadcast primetime apologies to the American people, saying, we're very sorry, American people, we really didn't know what we were doing, uh, uh, we didn't mean to criticize Darwin and his theory. And they also wanted uh, the government to fine NBC millions of dollars so they would never do anything like this again. Now, I'm happy to say the government didn't do that, but it was very interesting that uh, these attempts were made. And I'm not just making this up. If you want to see all the documentation, all the internet correspondence, all the documents, they're in my book, Forbidden Archaeology's Impact. <laughs> Now, last year, I went back to the museum. I was researching a paper that I later presented at the World Archaeological Congress, uh, which is the world's largest international organization of archaeologists. And actually, I was co-organizer of a session on history of archaeology for that Congress. And perhaps because of my connection with the World Archaeological Congress, uh, the museum officials decided, well, maybe it wouldn't be such a good idea to deny me access to these artifacts because, as they suspected, I probably would have made an intellectual freedom case out of it through the World Archaeological Congress. Because <clears throat> denying researchers access to archaeological materials in uh, public institutions is not a very nice thing to do. So, uh, they did grant me permission to study and photograph the artifacts. As I said, they're not displayed to the public. They're kept in an off-campus storage facility about, you know, five miles from the actual museum itself. But uh, these are, you know, some of the 50 million-year-old artifacts from the California gold mines. Now, <clears throat> again, by making use of some of the old maps, field notes, and do other documents left by Whitney in the museum, uh, we were able to go out and relocate some of the places where these discoveries were originally made. This is how Table Mountain looks today. Uh, here especially you can see that uh, a lava cap on, uh, which covers uh, the deposits. <clears throat> So we did make a little expedition to go out there, and we, we actually were able to relocate uh, with some difficulty some of the old 19th century gold mining tunnels where these discoveries were originally made, and we do have some plans to do some further research in those areas. Now, how far back in time can we go with evidence like this? And the year 1862, a scientific journal called The Geologist published an interesting report. Uh, a fairly complete anatomically modern human skeleton was found uh, 30 meters below the surface of the ground in Macoupin County, Illinois. And according to the report, directly above the skeleton was a thick layer of slate rock that extended for dozens of meters in all directions. Uh, that's important because one of the typical sorts of objections that's made in a case like this is, well, the skeleton slipped down through a fissure from some higher level. Uh, the presence of this unbroken layer of thick slate rock, which extends for dozens of meters in all directions, tends to rule out an explanation like that. 
Uh, according to geologists of the state of Illinois, this layer here, you know, below the slate layer at this particular location, is about 300 million years old. <clears throat> now, for a Vedic archaeologist, that's not surprising. Uh, according to the Vedic cosmological calendar, that would have been during the time of the Chakshusha Manvantara period, uh, one of the time cycles that's known in Vedic history. And we know from Vedic writings that humans were present on Earth during that period of time. So it's not too surprising for a Vedic archaeologist to find that there's physical evidence for it. <laughs> This interesting report from Scientific American tells of a beautiful metallic vase that was found five meters deep in solid rock near Dorchester, near Boston. Um, according to the United States Geological Survey, the rock in that place is 600 million years old. The oldest objects I found in my research come from South Africa. They are round metallic objects. They are found by miners at a place called Otosdalen in the western Transvaal region. The objects are small. They're one or two centimeters in diameter. Uh, they're made of a naturally occurring type of iron called hematite, which is considered uh, a semi-precious stone uh, for some purposes. Uh, the most interesting feature is the parallel grooves that go around the center of each of these objects. We showed these on the NBC television special, but before NBC agreed to allow them to be filmed, they said we had to submit them to an independent company of metallurgists for analysis. The metallurgists concluded that they could see there was no way these objects could have formed naturally in the layers of the Earth. In other words, they had to have been manufactured by someone with human-like intelligence. But these objects are found solidly embedded in layers of rock two billion years old. So I could keep you here from now until Christmas, you know, going through one case after another, because there are hundreds of these in the scientific literature, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be a little merciful. Uh, and I'm going to stop this little review right here. Uh, but I, I just want you to remember one thing that I said in the beginning. There are many scientists who will say that all the physical evidence supports this evolutionary picture of humans, uh, with humans like us coming into existence about 100,000 years ago. I don't think it's true that all the physical evidence supports uh, that particular idea. Actually, when we look at all of the evidence that archaeologists have discovered, and not just the small portion that we see in the current textbooks, we see there's a, a continuous chain of discoveries of human skeletal remains, human footprints, and human artifacts going all the way from 100,000 years ago all the way back to about 2 billion years ago, right back to the very beginning of the history of life on Earth. Now that's kind of interesting. Uh, it's an interesting coincidence, if you want to call it that, because that's exactly what we should expect to find if what the ancient Sanskrit writings tell us about human origins is true. Thank you. <clears throat>you can leave mail at that website. Uh, does anyone have a question now? We can take a few questions and then, you know, for a few minutes, and then, then afterwards I'll stick around a little while. Uh, there are some copies of my books here. If anybody wants one or wants to have it signed, I can stick around for a little while. And I think afterwards, I think the club members may have some announcements, too, that they'd like to make. So stay around for those. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, what would be the reason for the scientific community to hide all these proofs? What would be the main reason? So the question is, why would scientists want to hide this evidence? So 
The way this knowledge filtering process works is a little bit subtle. It's not that they think, well, here is some true evidence, which if known would cause people to uh, disbelieve in us and our theories, and therefore we're going to hide it. Rather, they think something must be wrong with this evidence. I'll give you an example. When I spoke